This is the second in a series of computer science lessons about string matching algorithms and how to implement them. In the previous lesson, you met a simplistic algorithm to search for one string of characters within another. The simplistic algorithm is often referred to as the naive algorithm because of its limitations. That's not to say it has no practical use, but in many ways it is inferior to the alternatives. Before continuing, it would be helpful to familiarise yourself with the content of the previous lesson. In this lesson, you will learn how to write a programme to implement the simplistic algorithm. The programme will be developed in VB.NET, but I'll show you the equivalent code in c -sharp and Python as well. It's important to familiarise yourself with the simplistic approach, because it will help you to understand and fully appreciate the more sophisticated algorithms, such as KMP and Boyer-Moore. These are covered in detail in later lessons. The pseudocode you can see here summarises the simplistic approach. We'll begin by stepping through an example. The outer loop scans the input string one letter at a time from start to finish. As we visit each letter of the input string, the position of the letter is recorded so we can jump back to it later if necessary. The inside loop then begins. It compares every single letter of the pattern with the current letter of the input string. If the current pattern letter is the same as the current input string letter, we can advance to the next letter of the input string and to the next letter of the pattern. If the next letter of the pattern is the same as the next letter of the input string, we can advance both pointers again. This continues unless the current pattern letter is not the same as the current input string letter. When this happens, the input string pointer is reset to the position that was recorded earlier. And the inner loop is abandoned, which means the pattern pointer will be reset to the start of the pattern next time the inner loop begins. The input string pointer is now advanced one place on from its current position. Its new position is recorded, and the inner loop starts again from the beginning. If the letters don't match, the input string pointer returns to its previously recorded position, in this case it stays put, and the inner loop is abandoned. This continues until, maybe, the pattern is found. The only thing missing from this pseudocode is a check for success. If the inner loop makes it to the end of the pattern, it means that all of the pattern letters have been matched. So we can add a simple if block within the inner loop to perform the test. Let's take a look at some real code. I've already created a Windows Forms application, and to start with, I've written the code in vb.net. What you can see here is a brute force approach to implementing the simplistic algorithm. I could declare a couple of array variables like this. I have an array of characters called input string, and you can see I've initialized it with the individual letters of the input string. I've also declared an array of characters called pattern, and again you can see I've initialized it with the word cakes. But behind the scenes in .NET, a string variable is actually an object that contains an array of characters. So I can put my input string data directly into a string variable, and I can put my pattern into a string variable. And I can reference each character separately, just like I can reference elements of an array variable. I have an input string pointer, which I've initialized to zero. I have a pattern pointer, which I've also initialized to zero. And as you saw in the pseudo code, I need to temporarily record the position of the input string pointer so I can jump back to it if I need to. So I've declared a variable for that as well. Here's my outer loop, which scans the input string one character at a time. And here I'm temporarily recording the position of the input string pointer. This is my inner loop, which scans the pattern. Notice it's running from zero to the length of the pattern minus one because when I'm referencing individual characters inside a string variable, indexing begins at zero, just like an array variable. Here, I'm comparing the current item of the pattern string with the current item of the input string. 
If they are the same, I advance the input string pointer. And the inner loop runs again, effectively advancing the pattern pointer. If the value at the pattern pointer is not the same as the value at the input string pointer, then we move into the else block, where we reset the input string pointer to the value that was temporarily recorded, and we exit the inner loop. That brings us back to the top of the outer loop, which will advance the input string pointer. Within the inner loop, I have my check to see if we've actually got to the end of the pattern, which means we've found what we're looking for. If it's found, this algorithm reports the starting position of the pattern within the input string. This is actually the resting position of the input string pointer minus the length of the pattern. So that's what we're calculating here. Let's make sure it works. Pattern found at position 15. We can see the word cakes right here at the end. The main problem with this approach is that the input string pointer has to move backwards after a partial match. This would create difficulties if the input string was being streamed from a file. We would need to write extra code to load chunks of it into memory, perhaps into an array variable like this, so we could traverse it in both directions. Ideally, the input string pointer should only ever move forwards. Also, this approach is not ideal for a large pattern that might produce a lot of partial matches. A lot of time is spent rechecking letters, perhaps unnecessarily. Another issue with this program relates to its scalability. Here we have a loop within a loop. For every pass of the outer loop, there will be multiple passes of the inner loop. Potentially, if we double the length of the input string and the length of the pattern, the time taken to perform the search will quadruple. This is called quadratic time complexity. It's fine for small amounts of data, but it could be problematic for some applications. And it begs the question, is there a better way? Here's the same program in C Sharp. The logic is the same, and it works in exactly the same way. And it has the same limitations. The only real difference is the syntax. And here's the same program in Python. It's not so easy to see where the loops begin and end, because Python depends on layout. Also, it's considerably less efficient, because of the way Python handles memory. This vb.net program also implements the simplistic string matching algorithm although the code is considerably more elegant. Here, we don't actually increment the input string pointer. Rather, we add the pattern pointer to it, which itself is being incremented. Furthermore, this is being done on the fly, as it were. The value of input string pointer plus pattern pointer isn't saved back into the input string pointer variable. This means there's no need to subtract anything from the input string pointer after a partial match. The logic of the test has also been reversed. We're asking if the two letters don't match. This also creates an opportunity to write less code. Elegant it may be, but even this clever version of the program must recheck some of the letters in the input string more than once. As before, if the data were coming from an external file, we would need extra code to buffer it. Furthermore, we still have a loop within a loop, which means quadratic time complexity. And here's the same program in C Sharp. Again, the only difference to VB.NET is the syntax. And this is the Python version. With .NET, it's possible to write a lot less code and get the same result using the built-in index of method of a string. That's what I'm doing here. I'm asking for the start position of the pattern within the input string. Alternatively, if you simply want to know if the pattern is inside the input string somewhere, you can use the contains method, like this.
These built-in .NET methods are also available in C Sharp. And we can achieve the same effect in Python. This time we're using the Python find method of a string and the in operator. In fact, these built-in .NET string methods use pretty much the same simplistic approach that I've already shown you, which begs the question, why bother writing all that code? The answer is that we may want to adapt the approach for a specialised application, so it's good to know how things work. Furthermore, there are more efficient string matching algorithms available, which, depending on the application, are easier to understand, implement and adapt if you're familiar with the simplistic approach. These include the Knuth Morris Pratt algorithm and the Boyer Moore algorithm, which we'll take a detailed look at later.